In this video, we should step through the code structure and explain the logic behind the events and life cycle for a CTrader indicator. As you can see, we have the CTrader algo application open and we have already created a new indicator called lifecycle test. And in the code editor window, you can see the basic code structure. There are just two methods displayed in our basic template. This is the initialize method and also the calculate method. We also add an additional method called onDestroy and explain its purpose later. But first, I will start with the initialize method. When a CTrader indicator is first attached to a chart, or when the user changes any of the parameter settings, an indicator instance is recreated, and the initialize method is called. It is used to initialize any variables you plan to use in your indicator. You can also define and reference additional indicators to create a single indicator using formulas from other indicators. As default, the new code template includes a parameter setting called message, and in this value, it states hello world. And in the method of the initialize, it will print this message to the CBOT log. We can demonstrate the initialize method by simply adding an indicator instance, which is the same as attaching an indicator to a chart in the CTrader trade application, and opening the log tab to see the results. And as you can see, the message has been printed that states hello world. Every time the indicator is first added to a chart, the chart is refreshed. Or when the parameter setting is changed, an indicator instance is recreated and the initialized method is called again. I'm going to change the message to CTrader rocks. And as you can see, in the log window, it's printed our new message. Now let's go back to our code editor window and look at the calculate method. The calculate method is called for each index of historical data. For example, if the current chart has 1000 bars, then the calculate method will be called for index zero, then one, then two, and it will continue until it gets to a maximum index of 999. The calculate method can be called many times per second during periods of high volatility, or fewer times when the market is flat. To demonstrate this in action, we will write a line of code to print the index value that is being passed to the method for each new tick of data. Now we have written our line of code, we can open up the build result window, and we can also build the indicator and make sure it's been built successfully. We can now close our build result window and go back to our CBOT instance. If we now look at the log tab again, we can see the values being printed in the log for the index value being passed into the calculate method. We will now go back to the code editor window and we will explain to you the onDestroy method. Our final event is the onDestroy method. This method is called when the indicator is removed from a chart and is no longer needed. We will need to write the code because it's not included when you create a new indicator. The easiest way to add the new method is to use the override code snippet. To do this, we make space, we type in override, and we type in onDestroy. Press the space bar, and this will automatically create our new method on destroy. This method is very helpful for programmers as it allows them to free allocated unmanaged resources and run other finalization tasks. This prevents memory creep and the indicator from holding onto resources after it's been removed. Some examples are closing any connections to external data feeds, freeing objects that hold a lot of data, and anything else that consumes memory. We hope that you found the video helpful explaining the life cycle of a CTrader indicator. Feel free to ask any questions at the bottom of this video and subscribe to be updated when we publish a new video.